Retro Rob plays everything. Hey there, real gamers, Retro Rob here, and today I am super excited to show you something I just picked up, and that is this the handheld game station. When I say just picked it up, I've been waiting like forever for this to show up. Uh, but anyway, this is a handheld Pandora's box system. If you don't know what a Pandora's box is, basically it is a little mini computer that runs an amazing amount, probably, you know, usually a thousand to three thousand classic arcade games, usually up into the nineties. So really neat thing. I've covered, um, I, I've got three of them now. This is number three and I've covered just the one in the past, which was the handheld arcade, which is, it's, it's like this big. It's like, it's a luggable basically. So having this in a handheld form factor is really cool as heck. I'm really excited. There's really no configuration on these things as far as I know. And yeah, just super excited. But I, I just don't know a whole lot about it because I've been avoiding watching videos. So let's get this thing open and we'll start with the front of the box, which is orange and awesome because it matches my coffee cup. Already off to a good start. Handheld game station. Enjoy high quality gaming experience. My wife is somewhat concerned that it carries coronavirus. On the left here it says game market, which would make it very different from other Pandora's boxes because it does have Wi-Fi, 4,000 milliamp battery, hmm, high resolution screen, that can mean a lot of things. The top of the box. The top of the box. Next to an orange. This is a cutie orange by the way, this thing isn't like giant. Okay, let's go on. To the bottom of the box, which is white. The right side of the box, which does something cool, and I've said this in the past, look at, look at that. The pattern from the front continues onto the side. That's freaking classy, people. Keep that up. The left side of the box. Handheld game station. Enjoy high quality gaming experience. Woot. I order thee to open. Oh yeah. All right, let's see if there's any wires or anything that come with it. It's in pretty decent packaging. That's probably why it survived the China and US post office. And there's a little box right here. There is a, oh, here, wait. Quality control passed. I trust that. And what do we got in here? Just a cable. And that is micro USB. All right, let's back up, take a look at the device itself. All right, here we go. Off with the top. Here's the front. Speaker up top. A disc. The disc feels really, really nice. I mean, it doesn't feel cheap. I don't know how I feel about this thing for playing games. It kind of reminds me of the Intellivision disc. <laughs> Except tiny. It might not be bad. We'll try it out. Analog stick. That feels really nice. That's well done. A, B, C, D, X, Y. Kind of a weird order, but hey, I can live with it. Got a home. Select a start. And looking on the bottom, there's nothing really exciting to report. Right side. Looks like it's the volume up and down. And you can see that they are separate, thank goodness. I like that. On the top, we have a spot for a TF card right here. Charging, a micro HDMI, and a headphone jacks, I believe. And we'll have to confirm that later. On off button on the left side. Here's the handheld game station next to the Clockwork Pi right here, which I love and the Game Boy Color. So it's about the same size as any of those. Wait, can I get that? <laughs> it said Android is starting. All right, so now I am going to take this away and I'm going to play it some and then come back and tell you what I think of it. Here 
here we are at the Pandora Games Mini main menu. As you can see, there are tabs up on the top, all games. There's like a lot. That uh, 0 to 203, that is not uh, how many games. That's how many pages. So uh, there's around 2,000 games at least on here. And then we've got categories, recent, and search. Search is probably the best way to find things. Uh, but there's a better search in here that I'm going to show you. Press and hold down the home menu. And first thing you're probably going to want to do when you get here, and sorry that I've segued off of the game market, but uh, let's go talk about handheld settings because this is where you will hook up your Wi-Fi and you're going to need it. So you go into Wi-Fi and then you can... Uh, Connect to Wi-Fi network, find your network in the list, and then connect. It's pretty much that easy. If you look down on the bottom right hand side of the screen, you can see that it's got a button mapped for each. That's good stuff. You want that first. Bluetooth, you can connect Bluetooth if you'd like a second controller. How cool is that? Sound, you've already got that on the side of the unit, so no use worrying about that. See that auto shutdown? That's kind of useful. Sleep's kind of useful if you want to save energy. I don't know why it has date and time. No, this is an Android based device. It's got a really good interface, but it's still just an Android device. If that matters to you, <laughs> it shouldn't. It doesn't matter. I mean, I think all the Pandoras, all the Pandoras that I've dealt with have been Android based. You can check for updates. Another important thing to know, if you have problems with the game market, like black screens, random lockups, do the factory data reset. You don't actually lose downloaded games, uh, but what it does is it resets that market and it can really save you. All right, so let's go to the game market. And this is where all the action really is. You've got this download chart, popular chart, increasingly popular, and then new game chart and these are all all right, but searching by category is probably the best way to do it. Here's what we can emulate. Arcade, PSP, Dreamcast, N64. It is way better at Dreamcast than you would think. N64, it's okay at that. PlayStation, uh, Super Famicom, PC Engine, or Turbo Graphics for you Americans out there, which is me. This is the Wonder Swine. There's no games for it. Uh, at least not into their built-in interface. So I don't know what's going on with that. Mega Drive, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and Famicom. So if I wanted to look for a Dreamcast game, I could just hit A on that. And look at got all these games. Now I downloaded uh, Soul Ability. Yeah, that's another thing to look for. Uh, there's misspellings, misnamings everywhere here. I mean, everywhere. So if that bothers you, it's going to be a problem because uh, Little Heroes of Bursting Drills is Mr. Driller. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff, I say. Okay, another thing. All right, let's, uh, I don't think, is Garand Theft Auto in here? No, it's not. All right, so... If I wanted to install Grand Theft Auto, I just hit on install and it will automatically install it. In some cases, it will tell you that this is not for your device and you won't be able to download it, which is sad. It's going to take a while to download. And here's the good news. It can do it in the background. Really cool. Really like that. And there's a pretty decent selection. I'm not 100% sure how to add my own games yet but i think it's probably possible to do it it looks it looks like it's just a regular um x fat card in here well it, it's definitely just a regular x fat card because uh, this came with a 32 gigabyte card and i upgraded it to a 64 and i just copied the old one onto the new one so aerospace troop come on do i want a flight simulator on here of course I do. Of course I do. 
All right, so in the future, if I want to check on how those downloads are going, I can go here into task management and you can see I'm installing one game, which I definitely should not have done that one. I'll remove that later and I'm gonna show you how to do that. And uh, I've got these other ones that are waiting, it looks like. And, but it'll say downloading if it's downloading. There's my completed ones. And then anything else? There is like this kind of genre thing. It's it's okay because like not all the Metal Slug games are downloaded immediately. So it made it really easy for me to go and download all the Metal Slugs. Uh, I would recommend uh, if you expand your card, download as many games or at least download all the games that you know you're going to want right away uh, just in case the storefront ever gets taken down and you know, you're kind of out of luck. Again, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to download your own eventually, but uh, I haven't really tested that ability yet. All right, let's hit D to get out of here. I think I've shown you enough. Uh, the search function's pretty good, but again, uh, one of the problems is, you know, misspellings. So like, let's just go for Space Invaders. So there's Space Invaders, but it's not. It's, it's Galaga. Here's the Space Invaders. And then this is interesting too. If you look, like there's different versions of it. So you never know what version uh, you're doing unless you get lucky. And right after here, it says what it is. So like right here, uh, that's for um, Final Burn Alpha, I believe. Yep. There we go. All right, back to home. I'm going to show you how to delete. Do, 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 do. Where is that? Is it game settings? I think so. Yep, there we go. Game settings. Talk to myself. Don't delete all games. That would probably be a bad idea. Take you a while to download them again. You can edit your favorite list. Uh, I had a difficulty in life. I haven't tested that, but I don't see how I could work across platforms. If I want to delete a game, because it's huge, <laughs> this is gonna suck. Uh, <laughs> you have to basically scroll through the entire list of games that you have installed on the device, but then you can hit it uh, and let's see. So this Cobra Command is not the greatest game. So if I want to delete it and hit A, I know, continue, and boom, clean up room. Especially important if you stick with the default 32 gig card that's installed. Now, let's try a couple games. Thumbs up, comment, and subscribe, or I will go Skynet on your butt. All right, we're going to start with some bubble memories. Uh, this system has an amazing amount of arcade games built into it. Uh, well over a thousand, that's literally over a thousand arcade games are in this thing. They run, you know, everywhere from pretty much perfect to god awful. Uh, this game kind of runs in between, but, you know, you can run some very modern bubble bobble here. By modern, I mean from the 90s. But anyway, uh, I played iRobot on here. It was pretty darn good. Strangely, if I didn't mention this yet, Frogger, the first time I played it, had a little bit of lag to it. And then I played it again, and it was fine. So I don't know if it was just a temporary condition uh, with the game system or what. Uh, but it ran fine the second time. So if you run into a game that doesn't run really well, you might want to try it again and see if it runs better the second time. But again, there's lots of fighting games. There's lots of shoot 'em ups in here. There's a lot of these side scrollers like this. I mean, Snow Brothers is on there. The newer Snow Brothers is on there. That kind of re-skinned version of it that came out later in the arcades. Just all sorts of arcade games. Uh, you got to kind of watch it with the racers. Some of the racing games uh, do not run the best 
uh, just because the steering was meant to be analog and of course this is basically a digital stick really that I'm using. Another note, uh, the D-pad, uh, I do not like the D-pad. It's not the worst, definitely uh, some of the Family Clones I've played have clearly had way worse D-pads, but it does feel weird to me. It's just not, I don't know, I, it, it's reactive and it's not uh, necessarily bad, it just feels weird. It kind of reminds me of the Intellivision joystick <laughs> or uh, Intellivision pad from days of old. So just something to note. Uh, but yeah, plenty of arcade games here. One other quick note, if I hit home and select at the same time, I will get this menu. I can save and load states from here. This does not work for all games. It does seem to work for all the arcade games, uh, but not necessarily for the console systems this emulates. All right, for those of you who complain that I never do fighting games, you're about to learn why I never do them. <laughs> Let's do some Street Fighter Alpha Zero. Um, this has a whole lot of fighting games on there. I mean, just a metric crap ton of fighting games uh, from pretty much every company that was prolific in doing fighting games. Uh, definitely, there's a whole lot of Neo Geo here, and there is a whole lot of Capcom uh, of all kinds. And just amazing. Just an amazing selection. I mean, I was they, they must have been really big fans of fighting games. Uh, note that there's also a lot of uh, like top-down shooters and side-scrolling shooters as well. Oh, man, really? Can I flash kick? Yes, I can. So he's basically Guile, huh? I'm guessing. Come on, you. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Keep hitting the same button. Spam that button. Sheesh. Uh, I'm going to get it. Yeah, I deserve that. Button spamming. You can uh, reprogram the buttons on individual games. It's kind of a painful process. I might do that in a different uh, video. Uh, just note, it's not where you would expect it. There's actually a separate button mapping utility uh, that you do outside of the game come on you're gonna die that's it come here come here come here don't you run away oops if I can figure out which is my punch button uh oh no oh come on I really hate those super moves that they added bunch of crap there we go that's why I quit fighting games Let's go on. All right, here we have some Frogger. As I mentioned earlier, the first time I played this, I actually had some problems with it uh, being kind of laggy, but now it seems really just fine. So I don't know what's up with that, but uh, seems just fine in subsequent playthroughs. So I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Uh, note the distortion when you're on the high def output. Uh, there is a bit of stretching here, quite a bit of stretching, uh, so it's something to think about. Uh, note, it's not so bad on the screen. Uh, the screen's kind of not completely widescreen, but a little bit. So you get a little bit of this distortion, but not as much as you see in this recording here. And I will play something off the screen in a little bit uh, as well. Come on now. Gotcha. Get this done. I'm going to do the uh, end one first. I have a tendency to really mess up that end one. I don't know why. <laughs> Look at how much faster it goes. You get used to like the home versions where it doesn't try to just murder the crap out of you as much. There we go. First level completed. Let's go on. Well, it just wouldn't be... A retro Rob video without me getting my butt kicked by a shooter, so here we go. X Dex as it is. And I will say that the controls are a little loose on this. I got a little bit of float here. 
This is kind of what I experienced with Frogger the first time I played it, too. Yep. Indeed. It's a little floaty. I'm going to switch over to the D-pad here. Oh, no. That's, that's horrible. <laughs> that is unacceptable. All right, use the analog. Or the fake analog, as it may be. As the case may be. And yeah. Ooh. Yeah, there's a little bit of lag here. Making it kind of hard to play. Uh, that does not show up in all shooters. This is the first time I'm trying X, X's on this. Uh, I have seen this problem with this game on other emulators as well. Other emulation handheld. So I don't know. Maybe it's a thing with emulating it. Uh, maybe the emulation isn't absolutely perfect on this game. But uh, I'm going to go on because this is yeah, not great. But again, some of the other shooters are just fine. In fact, many of the other shooters, because I've tried like two weeks of them, and most of them have been fine. Hmm. That's what I get for testing something the first time on here, but you should probably see it as it is. All right, so we're on to PSP games, but I did want to show you this, because I think I mentioned it earlier and didn't have an example. I'm going to try and install Assassin's Creed, and as you can see, unable to install. So there are some games on every platform where it will say it's unable to install it. Uh, so that's something to note. Just because it's listed in their store does not mean you can download it. Bummer. Oh, but when it runs PSP, it can run it swimmingly. Or it can run it garbage. But in this case, oh, in this case, you'll be pretty happy. I mean, what the heck? What else do you need to play other than Power Stone? To be honest, you know? Do you really want to play anything other than Power Stone? I don't think so. By the way, I'm terrible at Power Stone. My kid beats the living crap out of me at this game on a regular basis. To play, I just don't even want to play it. But I'll play it here for you. I will suffer for the sake of art. <laughs> art. Oh, jeez. Come here. Really? This is what always happens to me with this game. Jump! Jump! Where's his jump? Darn it. Ugh. Must power up. Get those power ups. There we go. Now kick his butt. Yeah. As you can see though, it plays very fluidly. Oh, almost got it. Come on. I am just button mashing at this point. I think the buttons are uh, somewhat out of order here. So the muscle memory is not working. I'm going to get my butt kicked. No. Got it. Did he get it? There we go. So again... You can probably map this and be okay. Uh-oh, he powered up. So I'm going to be dead. Now, while I power up and miss him like a hundred times, yeah, he'll just beat the crap out of me. But anyway, it plays it really good. Unlike me, I play it like garbage. One more note for the PSP. Uh, you can save your state on PSP games. Good. Very good. This right here might be one of the things that will make people choose this device over many others. And that is the fact that it can emulate Dreamcast games fairly well in many situations. Look, I'm all yellow. <laughs> the screen's shining back at me. Uh, it does do a fairly decent job here at playing Dreamcast games, except when it doesn't. <laughs> there are times uh, where, and I'm going to have to turn this down uh, because the music's going to totally get me busted. But, uh, yeah, it does run Dreamcast games really, really, really stinking well. Again, uh, when it does, but uh, when it doesn't, a bunch of glitching and a mess. Darn it, where's, there we go. Drive, drive. There we go. 
Uh, another thing is, on many games, you might want to remap the buttons. Eventually, I did learn how to play this game somewhat uh, with the buttons mapped the way they are, but you're probably going to want to change them up a little bit. Uh, especially on games like this that would have used the triggers, uh, because the triggers are mapped to the first uh, two buttons. Actually, the top and bottom first buttons of each row in this. So it feels kind of weird playing it. But uh, again, it's not bad. I'm hitting everything. I'm pretty impressed with that. Look at that. I can aim at every car. Come on, at least one drop off, people. There we go. There we go. I'm going to be fine. <laughs> I'm not going to be fine. This is terrible. Terrible. Again, sorry, uh, sorry I have the music off, but uh, that will definitely, definitely flag this video if I had it on. But uh, do note that the sound effects are fine. Uh, in this game, anyway. Um, there we go. That, oh, oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. Terrible. There we go. There's some Dreamcast. Not bad. On the Dreamcast, the VMU is emulated. However, you cannot save states. I wanted to clarify Dreamcast emulation real quick. I... I should have been a little bit more specific about how much it runs. On this page, I think like three of these games actually work on it. And one of them I know is kind of messed up uh, and doesn't work right. Uh, like 18-wheel trucker uh, just goes to a, a blank screen. Some of these it won't let you install. Uh, it will let me do this one though, uh, which is uh, Mr. Driller. But of course it's misnamed like a lot of these a lot of these games for the dreamcast are uh, misnamed so just watch out with dreamcast emulation is what i'm saying another thing to note soul ability do not do 60 hertz do 50 hertz it won't work at 60 hertz at least not on the built-in screen we're still on dreamcast and here's what i want to show you See how the graphics are messed up on here? Soul Calibur is actually playable, uh, but it is definitely not perfect. <laughs> I'm just going to do Kalik real quick. Or Killick. How do you pronounce that? I know Maxi. It probably says it properly, but again, uh, dealing with copyrighted music, so I got to not do it. And there we go. Uh, the game, again, it it plays, but there's enough, like, distortion in the background to make it sometimes very distracting. All right, let's move on. All right, here's some N64 emulation. Uh, I want you to really take a good look at the way some of the textures are messing up. I'm pretty sure that's an easy fix. I might try getting into the config file for this and changing a couple settings to see if I can't fix that flickering. Because otherwise Mario would run pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, as far as I can tell, it doesn't seem to be saving, uh, saving games. And that's kind of a problem. Uh, for this. I it, it bothers me that they included this on the system and then didn't really bother to even check into whether it was running decently because this the the problems with this really would have been a super easy fix, you know? Cuz it runs pretty smoothly. It's not bad at all. Uh, just again, you're going to have to put up with uh, some flickering textures. Bummer. Alright, here's a little Mario Grand Prix on the N64. Again, just kind of showing how things run on here. Uh, N64 emulation, just, you know, not amazing. But you can definitely play around a Mario Kart on it. Come on, you. You know, if you're willing to put up with 
a very occasional stutter. <laughs> there we go. I've always loved this track. Come on, you. Feel the wrath of Yoshi. <laughs> Sucker. Still only in second, though. Need another weapon. There we go. One thing I am going to mention is it's a little bit difficult to uh, drive and launch a weapon at the same time. Come on, you. Move it. Oh, darn it. So I'm, I'm kind of leaning my thumb over because the X button's what launches and it's just really hard to do both at the same time and I'm having a hard time just getting past that still not terrible come on you do not pick that up I'm not a complete sucker now I'm in third way to go hitting everything on the way Again, mm. there we go. Yeah, the control layout's not optimal for this. I'm gonna guess if I map the boost to the B button, I'd have a much easier time. I'm gonna go get that Wario. He can't be that far off, can he? Come on. For it. How far off can Wario be for crying out loud? They're up. Darn it. Protected himself. Mario's not playing as dirty as I would have thought. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. Let's get rid of these. I guess I could have kept one for protection. I'm going to hit myself. Nope. Just, uh, ran right into that. Way to go. Way to go, champ. Bounced yourself back to four. My life in Mario Kart. I do it to myself all the time. All right, come on, come on. Here, we'll get this. We'll just keep these around me, so if he gets close to me, I'm protected. Oh, come on! Urgh! It's like driving on I-94 for crying out loud. Move it. Ooh, almost bounced into that. There we go. That said, the controls are pretty responsive. This is actually playing fairly, fairly well. And there we go. First place in Mario Kart. It's crazy off-road vehicle. Which, uh, yeah. That's uh, what it calls ATV mania. Again, it may be difficult to find some games that they actually do have because... Uh, you know, they misname them so often. Here we have some ATV Mania on the PlayStation. And, it, yeah, there's nothing going to happen there. And we'll just do a single race. One player. And we'll just do this. Pathways, I suppose. Not the most inspired game ever. Come on. I do uh, 
like to test random games. I'm going the wrong way. There we go. I do like to test random games because uh, sometimes the emulators focus, uh, actually always, emulators focus on like kind of the main games, like the most popular games. Sometimes you want to play something that's less popular. You know, like this, uh, this horrendously muddy mess. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't you want to play this? Look at, look at its greatness. <laughs> There's going to be somebody out there that really loves this game. Um, I can throw grenades. That is pretty cool. Unfortunately, the button layout, again, is... Uh, I don't think it'll allow me to do that. I'm just going to be stuck here. Boy, I'm way behind. Way behind. Wait, is this it? No, I can switch. Wait. All right. So far, I've not located the button <laughs> to actually launch anything. Jeez. All right, let's do some Tekken. <laughs> I used to always play Paul. Oh boy, this game is not graphically aged well. I probably should have done one of the later ones, but you know what? Say what you will. Tekken's a classic. Was this in the PlayStation collection? Anybody remember the uh, you know that PlayStation classic, the little mini one? I think I'll bring that to MGC this year and we'll compare it to the real thing. There we go. Oh. Come on. Look at that. Kicked his butt. Let's play one more round. I enjoy a fighting game where I can actually beat somebody up. Doesn't happen that often. See, now I'm going to get my butt kicked. Come on. Ugh. It's a good hit. Knockout. So PlayStation, at least the few games that I've run on it, seems to run pretty well. Uh, one of the problems that I've found is uh, some of my favorite games I haven't been able to locate. Again, they might just be renamed. So, it might just be a thing where I need to search a little harder. Uh, another note on PlayStation, I can save states. That's good stuff. You like that click noise? It's kind of weird. How about a little Bomberman 2 on the NES? You know, I don't think I've ever played this game. At all. Huh. Something new? Something different? Oh, it looks really good. I mean, graphically, <laughs> they have really uh, anti-aliased the living crap out of Nintendo, though. So there's something to note. That isn't like something from my recording equipment. That's that's a real thing. That looks really uh, super AA there. Not Alcoholics Anonymous. We don't attend meetings, you know. Pull up. There we go. Let's do this one. There better be something better than balloons soon. Come on. Gotcha. All right, so do I have to look for the exit? Is that the deal here? Fine. I will do that. Some pickups that would make this process a little shorter would be nice. It says there's two left. But I don't see two, do you?
I can leave, though. Oh, that's lives left. Gotcha. T totally. Pro gamer here. Just saying. All right, so we do have some different characters than that. Oops. That's really something for me to run into. Good job. I'm not going to bother too much more with this. I don't know whether you'd buy this just to play some Nintendo games, but, you know, it runs NES. It's not bad. And here we have Dig Dug on the NES. And I'm playing it off of the built-in screen so you get an idea of how the built-in screen looks. And in my opinion, it looks really, really good on this. I mean, seriously, just beautiful. Uh, no dead pixels, very bright screen, very good looking, not too much distortion. In fact, I would say it probably looks a lot better on this screen than, really dude, come on, on this screen than it does on the HDMI output. Uh, it doesn't appear to have that blurring effect that HDMI output has on this device. The other thing is some games do tend to play a little bit better when you're not doing HDMI output, which is kind of interesting, really. But understandable. There we go. I really like this version of Dig Dug. You know, I don't think this version was ever released in the States. I know they had Dig Dug 2, but I don't think the original one was ever released for the North American audience. How bad does that suck? Just Japan. <sighs> I tell ya. All right, let's go on. Fancy a little Star Fox on the Super Nintendo? Yep, you can play it here. By the way, this is the competition edition which I'm guessing was used for competitions because it says competition edition. Yeah, I can take those context clues, folks. Not always, but sometimes. And you know what? Uh, I always like to test out a Super FX game, and it does seem to run fairly well. It's a little bit... Is it a little bit slow? I, you know, Super FX games always felt kind of slow to me, so... It's not, like, terrible. Definitely. And definitely fun to play because, you know, what's better than playing Star Fox? Not a lot as far as I'm concerned. I still like the Super Nintendo edition. And, you know, it's... By the way, I mean just the Super Nintendo uh, version of Star Fox. I realize... You know, later on, it, it did get prettier. But for some reason, this one really just really blew me away uh, when it first came out. Holy crud. Can I just miss that a little bit more? Please? There. Come on. No. There we go. Let's tear this thing up. Or see if we can tear this thing up. There we go. That dropped off. There we go. More, 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 more. Just focus my fire on the big ship. Come on. Don't! No! No! There we go. Dropped off. Now it's about to hit the fan. Oh, got me. Still, runs okay, right? Yet again, Super Nintendo games do indeed have a safe state. If you see Parodius, you must play Parodius. Just a great game. We'll do auto power up. Or I could play a whole bunch. I just want to do uh, a game that isn't a Super FX chip game. Come on, you. There we go. Oh. 
almost made a mistake there. Get away. Come on. There. Game and greatness here. If you don't like Parodius, you don't like games. But we're going to move on. And here is Mario Golf being played for the Game Boy Advance. The fact that this has the chops to do it is actually pretty impressive. Uh, my gameplay is not going to be, though. <laughs> I'm pretty bad at this game. Yeah, let's try... Nope. Let's try that. Overshot it. It's a par four. I'm out on the fringe. So I gotta hit a little bit harder, I think. Just a little. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. You can save the state in Game Boy Advance games if you so would like. I'm definitely going to be asked if there's Pokemon games on here and there's definitely a variety of Pokemon games. I am not an expert in the field so I cannot speak to whether they are legit versions or hacks. I'm gonna guess there's probably a little bit of both because there's a lot of them in here. All right, it's Super Mario Pinball. Note that the A and B buttons are transposed. But, I can definitely play the game just fine with this uh, because the B and X buttons operate the flippers. How darn cool. I'm going to have a lot of fun trying to do that uh, R and left though, the right and left thing. Hmm. Oh, wait, there's a... There we go. I love this game. It plays a little better on the real thing. I can feel just a, a wee bit of lagginess. But... It's not bad. <laughs> oh, would he just die? Two hours later, I will hit him. Ooh. Oh, just got it. There we go. Now I can feel happy. Missile Command. The system runs both Game Boy and Game Boy Color. As you would expect, not too bad. I... <laughs> Had a bit of a hard time finding this game because it was called Patriot Missile. Come on, you. There we go. <laughs> Patriot Missile. What's kind of nice about this game is, from an appearance standpoint, I mean, the actual look of the game, it's actually technically better than the original. Graphically speaking, uh, gameplay wise, you know, it doesn't have a trackball, you know? I'm gonna real quick defend Cairo. From, I don't know, what was that, a giant tiki flying through the air? I don't know what that thing was. Come on, giant tiki. Oh no, I'm gonna get hit! What? What? I'm making a mess of it. My defense is breaking up. No! No! Oh. My aunt had to live there. That is... That is really sad. Oh. Just a terrible, terrible loss. And, uh... Yeah. Boy. I suffered there. Let's go on. 
And here we are with zombies that are not human. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ugh. Zombies ate my neighbors, which uh, they have listed as zombies are not human. <laughs> Great. That's some good stuff right there. All right. Come on. Did I just do... I meant to only do one. Hopefully... Hopefully this is going to go with one player. Yeah, okay, good. Oh. Really one of the best games of all time. Uh, zombies are not human, of course, I mean. <laughs> I love that. Get the baby. This uh, analog stick's working really well. Ooh, ooh. There we go. Rescue Grandpa. I'm gonna turn the volume up just a little bit. And the sounds pretty decent come on you exit good stuff and it controls just fine and is pretty fluid I'm gonna point out that on the screen like the actual screen of the device it doesn't look like they're anti-aliasing it like it looks here you know how it looks kind of blurry it's interesting i wonder what's up with that rescue the military no Rescued. Have I checked every quadrant? I don't think I have. Clearly not. Rescued. Another rescue. Don't rescue him! Nope, yep, there's one in the water. Let's get him. I see a key up there. Cut it out. There must be a way up there, right? Did I miss something here? Clearly. Clearly I missed something while I was up here. Oh yeah, I can jump over. Gotcha. I should probably check on the other side of this though. Make sure there's nothing there. I don't think I have any keys. Doesn't matter, there's nobody in there. Get that baby. Rescue the baby. Rrr. Can I still rescue him? Yeah, I can. Grrr. Two left. Looks a little bit like Lizzie from uh, Rampage, doesn't it?
do good trash in there. Oh, I'm gonna find him. Uh oh. I still don't see anybody though. Oh wait, top corner, duh. No, you're not eating them. And there we go. There's some zombies. Oops. There we go. Zombies ate my neighbors. And for the record, you can do a save state here as well. This does list that you can do Wonder Swan games, but when I look in here, there's no games to try out. Kind of a bummer. And here we are with our last game. This is for the TurboGrafx-16 or the PC Engine, depending on your locality. Um, here's the thing. It seems to run all the games it has just fine, but there is only seven games that they have on their uh, download site for it. Sorry, I gotta kind of pay attention to the game a little bit. So that is kind of a bummer. Hopefully, uh, in the future, I'll be able to add some games to this, and if, I, uh, if I'm able to, I'll definitely do a video on that. But I mean games that are not in the store, hopefully. It doesn't look like it should be too hard, but I just haven't had time to test it out yet. Been too busy playing what's built in. But it definitely runs them well enough, so I'm kind of surprised they didn't put like Air Zonk and some other games in there. There we go. TG16 games are just so pretty. A much underrated system in its time. Nowadays, I think most people have realized uh, what a good game system the TurboGrafx-16 is, but uh, again, in its time, definitely underrated here in the States. I think in Japan, though, uh, it was pretty popular. So, there's that. All right. So there we are. We are at the end of our voyage uh, with gameplay. Let's go on to the verdict. So what's the verdict on the Pandora's Box handheld game station? Well, I gotta say, pretty cool little device. The controls work pretty well, even though I find the D-pad to be kind of annoying. It has an amazing selection of games from all sorts of systems and runs them fairly well, although at the high end it runs less and less. Uh, one of the things that I think is especially important about this device is that you can hook up to your wireless and you can get new games for it and you can do it easily, which means that for an entry level retro gamer or you know emulation gamer this is a great choice for them because they can get a whole bunch of games and they don't have to learn how to configure it at all and for that reason and it's priced being right around 100 bucks which basically puts it up there with things like the rg350 and many of the android handhelds i'm going to give it a thumbs up pretty cool little device again not perfect but for the crowd that's just starting out, I think you could do way worse. All right, I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in a couple days. Bye.